she's living the dream, literally and figuratively. And no matter what happens to her when WWE's NXT visits the Haverdell Fence Center in Fort Pierce, Florida, she will live to fight another day, always. So everybody, live it up for NXT superstar and Jersey girl, Liv Morgan. What's up? All right, Liv. So the name Liv Morgan, there's so much that can be done with that name. It's such a creative name. How did you come up with that? Um, I actually, I wanted to find a name that um, I could kind of use for my own practice purposes, like live. I'm, I'm a very big believer in just like, you know, living life to the fullest and just, you know, really just taking opportunity and just going hard at life. And so, Live, I was just like, okay, you know, I could kind of work it into this this persona, this character that is just full throttle, excited, high energy, just loves life. And so that's where Liv came from. I'm very, it was, it was, it was a lucky thing. Liv, what was it like growing up? And talk a little bit about your family and just uh, that type of getting you into this wrestling craze. Okay, so um, I grew up with a really good family. I had the brothers, I had an older sister, a younger sister that came a couple years after me, and my father was really big into um, wrestling. Um, he, he, of course, passed before I was born, so I wasn't able to, you know, be there with the family and, you know, witness this. But my brother said that, like, you know, whenever wrestling came on, like, no one was allowed to talk. It was just like a big, big event where everyone just sat and watched and it was just like a thing that was religiously done and like I said unfortunately he did pass before I was born but my brothers it just stuck with them they loved wrestling so when I was you know about in kindergarten I was like four or five I started getting into wrestling and it was just we like immersed ourselves and I fell in love with it it was it was just everything to us it was it was great when you were growing up, were you athletic? Um, I think I had natural athletic ability, and I was just, I was really competitive. I didn't play in many sports. Um, unfortunately, um, my mom was, she was a single parent, raising seven kids, so we didn't have the means, you know, really spend on, you know, athletic equipment and uniforms and do all the recreational activities, but... Um, I love to, you know, play outside a little bit with my brother. We had cheerleading in our high school, which was um, for free, you know, so I did that and ended up picking up really quickly, and it was just something that I did for fun. So that was the extent of my athletic background. I didn't really figure out all that I could do until I came to the Performance Center. Where was high school for you, and what high school? I went to Almond Park Memorial High School. In Elmwood Park, New Jersey. Now, in the cheerleading, were you a competitive cheerleader, or was it is it just cheerleading for the football team and the basketball team? Oh, it was. Um, we did the football team cheerleading, and we had competition cheerleading. So I was a competitive cheerleader for three, four years. Were you a flyer? I was a flyer. <laughs> <laughs> and did the team win anything? And did it even get to travel out of state or within the state? We traveled out of state, unfortunately. The years that I was um, competing, we did not win anything. <laughs> but, um, we still had fun, though. Now, it would be it would it be fair to say that competitive cheerleading is a sport? Oh, Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Um, I don't think that people understand. You know, like just the strength, the endurance of physical activity that competition cheerleading specifically takes. A lot of people probably think it's easier than it really is, but once you try it, like, I think everyone will have, like, a better understanding of just, you know, the, the hard work and the practice that it takes. Now, being a little bit humble, trying to get past that just a little bit, would you say that now you're one of the most famous people to come from your high school? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, actually, I, I, I do which is really, really weird because, um, you know, if you ask me that in high school where I'd end up, I definitely would not have believed that I would have made it to the WWE, so it's a little bit insane. But, yeah, you know, I guess. Cool. 
I would agree with that because I checked online, and depending if you want to believe Wikipedia or not, really, you're probably the most famous person right now that's from your high school. <laughs> oh my goodness, yes. Hard New Jersey, right? <laughs> yeah. So, now, how did you get that big break with WWE? Oh, I, I, I got um, super, super, super lucky. It's a really funny story, actually. So, um, before I had come to WWE, I was working out as a clear bracer. And so, every, every time that wrestling was on, I'd put it on the TV. And, like, whatever. Some of the girls were like, Gianna, really? But I, I loved it, and I needed to watch it during my shift. Wouldn't miss it. So, I have the wrestling on. A lot of the girls were aware that I was like, you know, this is super fun. And um, one day, Enzo Amore walked in at Hooters, and me being, you know, the fan that I was, I watched NXT on Hulu, I knew exactly who it was. All right, that's when I introduced myself. And I just was going on and on and on and on about how I'm just, I love wrestling, I want to be a wrestler. And um, he was kind enough to pass on my information to Joe DeFranco. Joe DeFranco is a world renowned strength and conditioning coach, and he actually trains Triple H. So I go to this gym. Not having worked out a day before in life, you know, like I said, I've only done cheerleading for a couple of years. You know, I didn't really know what I was in for. So, I worked out this gym for like a week. And I guess Joe was kind of like impressed with my endurance and my strength for, you know, being a girl that's 115 pounds and was 19 years old at the time. Someone who's never stepped foot in the gym. And he passed along my information to Canyon and Kenny Seaman and Triple H. And they flew me in for a try at about six months later. So it was all just happened very quickly. It was just, I feel like I was in the right place at the right time. And I just, it was a blessing. It was just kind of overnight. It was amazing. When this is all going down and then you're actually there and then you get signed, what is it like for you and your family and, and their reaction to all this? life-changing, and it was kind of hard to grasp. Like, we couldn't believe that, you know, me, who grew up watching wrestling, and, you know, just our circumstances, we had, like, a very hard life growing up. A family was a bit dysfunctional, and we couldn't believe that one of us made it to the maybe I actually, um, when I got the phone call, I was getting ready for a shift after this, and my brother was there, and they told me that they wanted to talk to me contracts, and I just burst out crying, and my brother knew right away that you know, they were interested in signing me. So it was just, it was just, it was, I, I, can't, I really can't put it into words like how it seems to my life and my family's life. We're just very grateful. Now, have they seen you wrestle live yet? Yes, 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 yes. So um, we had a show at the Madison Garden Theater back about last year, and um, I got everyone tickets and. <laughs> they were so loud, and they just were calling me Gianna. Like, you know, they're, like, not calling me live. They're like, Gianna, go, Gianna. And they're just cheering for me. And it was just a very surreal, surreal moment that, like, my brothers and my sisters and my mom were front row watching me achieve my dreams. And just uh, I felt honored that I was able to, you know, do that for them. They're very, very proud of me. Liv, what can you say about the WWE Performance Center and just coming into this whole experience right from the beginning, green, and learning from the staff, the incredible staff that's there? Yeah, I took my very first bump in the WWE Performance Center rings. Um, it, was just, it was just very overwhelming. Like I said, I didn't know what I was in for, you know, not coming from this business, not having any family from this business. I just... Um, had a very open mind and I was ready to just take things head on. Um, the performance center is it's more than anything that I think someone that's aspiring to make it in the wrestling business can ask for. We have we have about like five different ranks. We have a crash pattern ring where we can try like high flying moves. We have slow mo classes where we can work on our presentation skills and the staff is the staff can be better being the athletic trainer, the medical trainers, and just our coaching staff. It's literally like wrestling heaven. I, like I said, I did not, I was not able to figure out what I was physically capable of until I stepped foot in the performance center. I find out more about myself every single day that I'm there, and we're just constantly learning so much. I'm definitely a better person since 
I've been in the WB. 